I think we've made this video seven or eight times by now, but we're going to do predicting the ending of Attack on Titan again. Because every month, every chapter, we get a whole new perspective, and I think I've cracked the code every time on how I think it'll all end. So mainly what we're going to do is we're going to go through characters and say whether or not I think they're going to end up alive or dead. I mean, that's the most interesting way, but before that we'll talk about all the different types of endings. Before that we got some quick announcements, we're going fast here, right? Uh, remember to subscribe. I'm trying to get back up to 600 subscribers like we had on the old channel before it got deleted uh, for bullshit copyright. Bullshit. Uh, Patreon, whatever. This isn't paid content. You probably shouldn't patron from some unscripted uh, rant video about how everything ends. Like, comment, and subscribe is all very fucking helpful, but Twitch. We're going to be doing a discussion about the most recent chapter as well as this video if you want to talk about the ending on Twitch. It'll be the day after this goes up, which should be tomorrow for me. Um, so, in two days from where I am now, which is irrelevant, but on screen now, because I'm going to try and do some editing for this video, I don't just want it to be a blank, uh, like an Attack on Titan image and a podcast sort of thing, I want to make it a little bit more interactive than that, this video, um, a little bit higher of content than, uh, the old times I had done this video, um, but, yeah, so I'll have the times, and I'll have when that is in different regions, I need some of the loyal subscribers, some of the ones that subscribed before there was even a video on this channel because of the, all the clusterfuck that went down in the old one, all the people that follow me on Twitter, um, some of the regulars, I need some of them in there because I don't want to be talking to fucking no one on Twitch, it's a new platform, I need some support on the ground level, right? Get out there, boys. Um, the Twitch, the Twitch channel should be linked in the description I created it, I think I've done it alright. Uh, who knows, it's a whole new forte, trying to diversify the content, um, I'll upload, like, sort of stream highlights or whatever afterwards, I think, to try and promote, uh, both the Twitch channel and the YouTube channel, I'll try and grow and diversify here, you know what I mean? Um, so with that being said, we're two minutes in, I think I've gone over everything, uh, Twitter is also important, if you follow the Twitter, you got all the updates, and also you'll get reminders before we go live, if you want to be there, but you're afraid you'll forget or something, or you're not sure about time zones and everything, I'll keep it up to date, um, yeah, so Twitter is important, Twitch stream is important, all the other stuff, whatever, you can do it, you cannot do it, doesn't matter to me. Um, so, Attack on Titan, chapter 122 just came out, we're about uh, 15, 16, 17 days away from the next chapter coming out, um, I've got a feeling a lot of this could be proven uh, false, or, I was thinking about a different word there, I'd retroactively be null and void uh, after the next chapter, because <coughs> some of the characters that I say live might die in the next chapter, some of the characters that I say die might live through the next chapter, because uh, the rumbling has activated. 122 at the end of it, rumbling's activated. Um, I made a review of the chapter. Uh, that's probably a necessary viewing if you want to understand sort of the way I'm coming at this, some of the terms I'm using. Um, Big Ymir in the thumbnail, it's called Ambiguity in Action. I think that's what I fucking called it. I uh, worked hard on that video, it's doing all right. Um, so yeah, in that video I talked about the concept of either it having an Evangelion Berserk type ending, where the good guys do overcome everything in the end, or if we go with the Devilman ending, where Eren wins and everything uh, gets miserable, and the world just ends, and fuck it I guess. Uh, that was the whole plan. And Isayama, I point out in the video, originally he did plan to kill every character, he planned to have a terrible unsatisfying ending. Um, yikes, burping. Um, he planned to have an ending like that, uh, originally, and he was going to just have uh, Eren win, presumably. So now we honestly don't know if Eren's going to win or lose. There are still some that would say Eren is the uh, good guy, and they're cheering for him to win and end the world, I guess. I don't quite understand, but there you go. Um, so I predicted in the video that we would have some Evangelion-type ending um, with Gabby and Historia sort of coming together and ending, uh, and ending Eren, effectively, overcoming Eren, and all that. So that's how I think. So I think we end at chapter 130. I, I think I've come to that conclusion. Some people think we're going shorter than that. There's just so much to wrap up that I don't think it's possible that we only have, like, four chapters left. I think if we have eight, hold on, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. That would be eight more chapters. Eight more chapters is... It's probably enough time, eight more months of Attack on Titan, we'll all come to terms with it uh, by the end there. It'll be a fun time, I think eight chapters is the right amount. 
Or maybe he'll do some random shit and have us end at 133 or some weird number. But 130 seems like a nice rounding number. I don't think it's going to be 125. Um, that would be the closest, most roundestest number. So 130 it is. I think eight chapters is about time. We've got to affect the rumbling. Annie's going to come back. We've got to catch up with Levi. We've got to see who the, the, the father of the baby is. We've got to see what relevance the uh, child has. We've got to... Uh, thematically get everything wrapped up we got to do a happily and happily ever after chapter we got to get the fucking final panel in somehow all that shit we got to deal with all the rumbling we got a big fucking fight on our hands characters have got to die there's a lot of shit that has to happen and honestly i don't think many characters will die i think uh, spoiler alert if we get into the characters quickly i think the only character that's at risk of dying that's important next chapter is zeke um but we won't start with Zeke, I'll just let that simmer for a little while. I think we should probably go through the main three first, and who I think lives and dies, and this will also incorporate Annie and John into this character, into this conversation here. Um, so in my opinion, with, with Aaron being flawed at the end, he will die. I think we will probably get a resolution with Aaron, I think he'll probably see... Uh, the devil in his ways. I think he'll probably redeem himself before he dies, maybe. I don't know. It doesn't necessarily have to happen. I think it'd be cool if Aaron just died a villain, not understanding what he did was wrong, and just, like, screaming or some shit. Now, effectively, I think... Let's just bring Reiner into it. I think Reiner will finally beat Aaron after losing to him so many times over this series, and he'll probably, like, sacrifice himself or something, and Aaron and Reiner will die simultaneously. It'll be, like, the two sides the of the same coin gimmick that he sounds going on, the big parallel between the two of them, the two sort of main characters of each side, and they'll die together at the end, and I think that'll be, like, the major final death of Attack on Titan. Um, Aaron and Reiner will probably be the two big deaths. I think they're the biggest deaths. I have a lot of characters living, because Attack on Titan, despite popular belief, doesn't really kill characters. If you reflect on everything, the most important character to ever die was probably Erwin. And that's not that, like, Erwin was a pretty major character, but, like, that's the biggest one, really. Kenny was pretty big, but he was, like, a villain. He sort of, like, had earned his death. He had done enough fucked up shit. Uh, Sasha was another big one I know a lot of people cared about, but she was always a very minor character. She was always there. She was a very frequent minor character, but she never had any big impact on the plot or anything like that. Then recently we had Colt. Pixis dying is pretty underrated. I think that's a pretty m massive one, unless somehow he becomes a shifter and doesn't die. I don't think we have been given... Oh, fuck... I don't think we've been given the appropriate time to sort of mourn Pixis' death. That's a very long-time character that, that supposedly just died. He's a titan now. I think maybe we'll get that moment when someone has to kill him. I don't know. Who needs something to do in these final chapters? And killing uh, Pixis could be uh, part of their character arc. I guess Connie's probably not going to have anything to do. Maybe Connie has to kill the Pixis titan or something. He wasn't necessarily close to him. Maybe Aaron does it or something. I think it'll factor in somehow. And I don't necessarily think Pixis is going to become a shifter anytime soon. This fucking yawning bullshit has to go, you know what I mean? Um, so that's what I think will end up happening to Aaron. I don't think Ymir is a character. I think we've seen or we'll ever see of Ymir. But this sort of comes to the question about the final panel. And I think the final pal panel, rather, is wholly irrelevant. It's sort of like that stupid audio everyone freaked out about. The final panel and that audio mean nothing. They can literally mean anything Isayama wants it to mean. There's no point speculating on who it is in the final panel. It has dark hair, whatever the fuck. There are millions of characters with dark hair. It could be a flashback. It could be a dream. It could be some thematic symbolism with someone holding the baby and saying, we're free, they have black hair. That's all we've got to go off. Everyone assumed initially it was Aaron, so it means it probably isn't Aaron. And I've seen some people say it's like Aaron and Ymir, and he's like, finally, you're free or something. But I don't think we'll see Ymir again. Um, and the, the audio just sounds like the rumbling, I guess. Who cares? There's like a scream or something, and everyone's like, who's screaming? It, it really doesn't fucking matter, does it? Anyone could scream. It doesn't matter at all to anything. And uh, I see people that describe it as like, it's so chilling or some shit. It's like, it's just fucking audio with reverb and some motion, and then there's fucking screaming. It's like, what the fuck is this? Why does anyone care? It's just fucking bullshit hype for a fucking marketing campaign to make some money. And you all fell for it, so I don't know what to say to that. It means nothing. 
Um, the rumbling's going to happen. It's going to be some terrifying shit. Um, so uh, some minor characters will probably die, but I don't know. We'll go through and we'll see if we can remember minor characters because I have a bunch of them listed off here. Um, so that's... I don't know if I have anything more to say about Aaron and Reiner's death. Reiner will be some sacrifice shit. It'll make up for all the death he's caused. It'll be like he's saving the world. Finally, he's really saving the world. Um, he'll redeem himself. He'll have like a heartfelt goodbye to fucking Gabby or something. And then he'll charge in and she'll be like, no, but he'll fucking do it. I don't know how they're both going to die simultaneously. Aaron might explode or some shit. Isn't there some explosion shit when they transform the Colossal Titan explodes? But uh, I don't know. Somehow I think they'll die together. Uh, I don't see either one of them surviving. Though it would be interesting if Reiner survived, um, since he's been so close to dying all the time. It'd be very interesting thematically if he just didn't. Um, though going from the suicide attempt to saving the world through death would be like, oh, well, see, suicide is bad. Don't do it. You might have to save the world later on. That's an interesting little theme that you could throw in there. But I think Aaron is irredeemable at this point. Um, something has to be taken from Eren for him, um, since he's orchestrated all this death and carnage, he's just as bad as Reiner now, he's pretty irredeemable in the overall sense. Um, so yeah, I think they both have to die, I think thematically they've done too much to, uh, get a happy ending from either of them. It would be interesting if Reiner got a happy ending, it wouldn't be very interesting for Eren to get a happy ending. He's obviously not going to end up with Mikasa after the I will always hate you speech, and now that we know that that actually was in fact true, everything he was saying there, he did not like Mikasa. He says he's always hated Mikasa. God, what a fucking great scene. Fuck Mikasa. Um, yeah, it's great. Uh, but Eren and Reiner will probably die together, and I think those are the most major deaths. Ugh. Yeah. Deaths. That's how you say it. Um, so, following that, we have our... To round out the trio, we have Armin and Mikasa, who I both think survive everything. Now, Mikasa's character arc is very uh, stagnant, shall we say. Not the biggest fan of either one of these characters. I dislike Armin because I dislike his character. Mikasa's just a little bit underwritten, even though I just said fuck Mikasa. Whatever, I don't really dislike either one of these characters. Overall, they're just not my favourites. Um... I wouldn't take pleasure in them dying or anything. Um, Armin, uh, we'll go with Mikasa first. Mikasa's character arc, uh, they've definitely been setting it up. Isam has been setting it up with that, that I hate you scene. And when she left the scarf behind is that she's finally overcoming this thematic or scientific, maybe in-world uh, ability where she's supposed to be tied to, to Eren's will. Jesus Christ. Fucking yawn bullshit. So she's going to overcome this Ackman curse thing, and she's going to get over Eren. I think that's her main character arc, the person that saved her um, when she was at her lowest point, when her parents had been murdered and she was going to get sold into sex slavery. Eren comes in and saves her, and she sort of relied on him for guidance and purpose and everything uh, since. Sort of like a weird Guts and Griffith thing here. Uh, where Mikasa just relies on him, and now she's got to find her own path and walk her own path. And I think she's going to end up doing this. I've been very obvious with this in the past. I've said this in my Jaeger Master Plan video. I think this very much happens with Mikasa and Jean. I think they end up together. I think they'll probably go to, like, Kiyomi's homeland or whatever together um, at the end of this series. Like, Mikasa finally leaving it all behind. She'll be like, I have too many bad memories uh, on Paradise. I don't want to leave. Eren's dead. Um, so I'm going to go to fucking, uh, wherever Kiyomi's from, because that, that's been set up. It's been set up that, uh, Kiyomi wants her to go back with her and that she's going to be a powerful, uh, bureaucratic ally over in the home country. Um, and I think maybe we'll get like that scene in like the final chapter and John will run up and be like, I want to go with you or whatever, because it has been set up since the very, very beginning that John has liked Mikasa. And it always seemed weird because most people would assume that Aaron and Mikasa would probably end up together. But now we know that it's probably not going to happen. Um, imagine if Mikasa got back with him after this fucking I hate you bullshit and all this evil stuff Aaron's done. What a fucking pathetic person she would be. But instead, I think she's going to get over this with John. There's a reason John hasn't been killed off, even though he hasn't done anything in fucking years. And I think it's because Isama planned from the beginning for Mikasa and John to end up together. Um, 
Yeah, I think he meant he said they were meant to be or some shit. Because that John shit has been set up. That's like chapter two. I mean, episode two of the anime. I think that happens. No, it would be episode three. But that's very early on. This has been set up, and um, yeah, I think it'll get paid off in that way. John runs up. They go away together. I don't think it'll be alluded to, like, they cut to the future. I remember I always had the image since I was, like, very young in the Attack on Titan sphere, and it was always, like, they're going to do a Harry Potter-esque cutaway, and uh, to spoil what Armin's character is going to end up with, I was going to say, like, they would always have, like, they cut away to the future, and Armin and Annie have a bunch of kids, and Aaron and Mikasa have a bunch of kids, and they're, like, hanging out. But I think that's almost impossible now. I don't think we'll get like a five years later. I think it'll, we'll just get the end of it. And I don't know, maybe it'll end on a speech from Armin. We know what the final panel is going to be. Maybe Armin's giving some internal monologue speech about freedom or whatever, and it's going to tie everything thematically uh, into a thing. And he's going to imagine Aaron holding a baby or whatever. And that'll be how we get to the final panel or something like that. As he's looking over the ocean, as he watches Mikasa and John leave or something, and he's with Annie, and they sort of, like, hug a little bit. Uh, that's how I think it'll end. Well, we we'll may as well get right into Armin, because that wraps up what I think Mikasa and John are going to end up being it. So, obviously, John lives and Mikasa lives. And I also think Armin and Annie live. Um, on... On the uh, chapter review I just did, there was a very interesting comment that sort of made me go, oh, yeah, that's probably how it's going to happen. Where uh, someone said, instead of leave, uh, instead of Gabby and Historia, because they come to the conclusion in that video that Gabby and Historia were going to be the pillars because Gabby represents an, a version of Eren that didn't uh, give in, and then Historia... Uh, it, uh, and then Historia represents a version of Ymir that didn't give in, and how those two thematically were going to beat uh, Ymir and Eren in the end, and that's how thematically everything would uh, wrap up. And I, I sort of said that, and I said also Reiner and Falco would like be the muscle to help them do it. Um, and obviously Reiner, I even thought back then, would do this uh, sacrifice, and him and Eren would go out together. Um, and then someone commented, well, it's probably going to be Armin, right? And I was like, Ugh, probably. Armin's probably going to have a massive uh, influence over these final things. He's obviously Aaron's supposed best friend. Um, there's something interesting I just thought of. Um, there's the scene where it's after it's a flashback after they get back from uh, murdering Marley. And it's like when we're like... Uh, it's like after they go off in the airship and we like cut away and it's the chapter where Armin's speaking to Annie, uh, but we don't know he's speaking to Annie until the end of the chapter. And it's sort of like a catch up chapter of what happened in the time skip. And there was a scene in there, or maybe it's from a later ep chapter or something, where Aaron has the long hair. It's before he goes off to Mali, but it's like two years after the end of season three. Where he's like, he still talks to Armin and Mikasa and he talks to everybody. It's when they bring up who's going to succeed Eren as the attack titan if they have to do it. Um, and and Eren at that point still says that he really cares about all his friends. Which he seems to not care about at all now. So he still needs some sort of um, explanation to why he turned on them all so much. Um, I don't know if it has to do with the Ymir thing. Uh, I'm sure we'll get some sort of explanation, maybe in his final redemption speech before he dies or something, if he gets redeemed, that is. Um, that had something to do with Armin, I think, because Armin was there in that scene, I guess that's what made me think of it. But Armin, to distract from him going after Eren, I think they have to talk one more time, obviously, honestly. Um, but I think to distract... Uh, Armin from interfering in this Gabby Historia versus Eren thing that I've got theorized about. I think Armin's main purpose in these final eight or so chapters is he's going to go and interact with Annie. Um, the rumbling I theorized maybe is in my chapter, the chapter before the most recent chapter of that review, um, I theorized that Annie uh, may be working for Eren in some way and Eren had time fucked his way into the Lionheart family and told her father something and that's why her father was so driven to make Annie a warrior and that's why he said that the whole world would be against her at some point because when the rumbling happens and she's the only one on Aaron's side um, then the whole world would be against her. So I theorize that when Annie comes back the rumbling is like a signal to her to come back out that future Aaron had given to, to her father and her father had given to her 
and that she knew that from the very beginning, and that's why she was always so weird. So the rumbling happening would be her signal to come back out, and she'd have to fight alongside Aaron. That's my working theory. It's probably not true. But if we work on top of this, um, I think Armin will try and be the one that convinces her, and I think that'll be what those two characters do for the remainder of the series mostly. There'll be some cool fight scenes that they'll both participate in with the larger cast, but I think it'll all revolve around them to... Uh, and arm and convincing Annie uh, to to because she hasn't done too much bad shit to come around and everything because the Armin and Annie relationship has been teased for a very long time um, especially now since we've had the really awkward scenes with arm and talking to the crystal and uh, doing the fucking Sundare I wasn't talking or I don't like her to hitch all the time so it's pretty obvious that that's where we're leading here. Now, a very interesting little undercurrent is that maybe it's Bertolt's will that makes him like Annie. And in some ways, if Armin ends up getting with Annie, it'll be in some way Bertolt also getting with her, up our big boy Bertolt, um, which would be an interesting little thematic parallel. But the teasers were there even before Armin became the Colossal Titan that he did like Annie and everything like that. So it's very interesting and subtle if they do end up together and you're like, was Armin always into Annie? Uh, Because it's not outrightly stated. There's no blushing or anything, but they are clearly pretty close. And Armin and Annie do most of the talking in uh, episode 23 when she reveals herself. Um, So yeah, it'll be very interesting whether or not it's interpreted as Berthold uh, influenced Armin to go after Annie or he got with her of her own will, and he had always liked her, and stuff like that. Um, yeah, so that's what I think Armin and Annie end up doing, so I, I think both of them live. That would make uh, Annie the only survivor of the original four uh, that journeyed to paradise at the end of the series, if she were to survive and uh, Reiner were to die. I think Annie has to do a lot of character, like, interactions before she dies. I think she has to talk to Reiner one time. She'll have to talk to Aaron. She'll have to talk to Arm and her and Mika will probably have some weird stare off or whatever. Um, I don't know. She wasn't very close. Back then, not very many characters were relevant. She doesn't have to talk to, like, uh, Historia because she doesn't really know Historia. Um, so, yeah, that's what I think is going to go on there. I think we finally get a happy ending with those two. Either that or the rumbling will destroy the, the shit around Annie. She's obviously got to come back. Um, she wouldn't have been sat around teased um, forever if she was not supposed to come back. And I don't think she's going to come back just to die. I don't think, anyway. So, I think we'll move on to... I have an order here to go on to Levi and Hanji, but I think I'll go with Zeke, because Zeke is sort of the last major death. Um... I've got written down here. I've got some characters that are live slash dies. Um, gross. I think... Oh, what are we going to do with Yelena? We haven't seen her in a while. Let me just think about that. Will Yelena die? Probably, right? If both of the Jaeger brothers dies. I could see some weird suicide shit going on with Yelena where she kills herself in some super violent fashion because both her gods are dead or something like that. I could see some nihilistic bullshit like that happening. Um, or she gets eaten by a titan or something like that because she uh, was uh, one of the masterminds behind uh, that plan. But Zeke, I think, is at risk of dying in this very next chapter, actually, because he did get shot by Magath, remember? And he's all fucked up, And but he caught Eren, and he thought maybe he was going to regenerate. Eren regenerated because Ymir was like, he's a fucking new titan form, bro, um, assumingly. Um, but Zeke is not healed. So, like, if Aaron transforms right there, I think how Gabby gets out of this situation is Aaron just goes over and stomps Zeke, and Zeke is dead. Uh, like, at the beginning of the next chapter. And then Gabby, like, runs away, and that's how Aaron doesn't just stomp on her immediately, because Gabby is not dying at the uh, beginning of the next chapter. Um, I think, yeah, so I think Zeke could die, and he could die very quickly and very soon. Um... Yeah, he's. I think if he doesn't die at the beginning of the next chapter, there's no way Zeke survives now. He's rather pathetic at this point. I think it'd be sort of like putting him out of his misery. Um, he tried to euthanize the whole the whole population. That's not very good. It would be pretty cool if there was a scene of him fighting with Marley again, like really this time against Aaron after Aaron fucked him over. I think that'd be interesting. Um, but yeah, I don't really see what the potential in uh, Zeke's character is now that now that 
Though Grisha did say, Zeke, you have to stop Eren, so he probably will have something to do with stopping Eren at the end um, and fulfilling his father's wish, and then he'll have this sort of fulfillment from his father and he can die uh, die ha- with with the love of his father and having achieved what his father asked him, finally get over his daddy issues, and then he can die. I don't think Zeke survives now that I'm thinking about it. I don't think he dies next chapter out of nowhere because otherwise they wouldn't have had that Grusha thing. Unless that was supposed to be his character coming full circle and he knows and he loves his father again now and then he dies. Or maybe he'll give like a speech to Gabby and be like, uh, you have to fucking take Eren out. That's your mission or whatever. And it'll be sort of him passing the will of Grusha and himself onto Gabby, which would be a cool moment because then Gabby will kill Eren or whatever because she is likely the one to take out Eren uh, eventually. That could happen, something like that. But I think, uh, all in all, I think Zeke has to die at this point. I don't think many people expect him to survive. Um, oh, so my major... <laughs> so the major three deaths, I think, that are going to happen before the series is over is Zeke, Reiner, and Eren. I think those three will be the big three deaths, and we'll have a bunch of little... Uh, deaths on the side here as well. I think Armin lives, I think Mikas lives, I think John lives, and I think Annie lives so far. Uh, let's move into the more, the other main uh, characters before we get into some of the side characters. Oh, I'm just copying and pasting off my fucking sticky note here. We already talked about Gene living, uh, so we don't need to go over him. We talked about Re- Reiner dying, Zeke dying. We talked about the main three. Let's get them out of the way. So the main characters we have left, Levi, Hanji, Historia, Gabby, and Falco. And we also have Pierre, Mark, and McGarth, and Connie I have written down. Who are some other characters? We've got Hitch. I don't know yet. I think Hitch will probably live. Uh, she she has to have a reunion with uh, uh, Annie as well. So we'll put... I just typed Hitch's down, but we'll get rid of her. So she'll live. Who else do we got sticking around? Um, Pierre, McGarth. I fucking threw up a bit in my mouth. Have fun with that. Um, Connie. Who else is there? Flock. That prick Flock. Flock's going to die. I think that's obvious. Uh, he deserves it by this point. He was trying to burn down buildings in Mali of innocent people. Flock's a fucking dead man. If there's anyone that's going to die immediately from the rumbling, it's probably going to be Flock. Um, Flock and Elena, maybe. Because they sort of wished for the rumbling to happen. It was always their plan to help actualize it. And it'll be pretty ironic for the bad guys to die of their own creation. The minor bad guys that Eren really doesn't give a fuck about. And he's like, yeah, a bunch of dumb pricks. Remember the scene where Eren breaks out of prison and he goes up and he puts the jacket on all cool. And he reunites with all the uh, Jaegerists. Um, yeah. And he didn't give a fuck about Flock then. He certainly doesn't now. So fuck Flock. He doesn't care that he dies. It's for the greater good and all that bullshit. There's also all the new scouts we got introduced to. One's name is Mia, right? Uh, like the Mikasa girl. Uh, Mikasa's is fangirl. I don't know. Maybe she'll live. Maybe she'll die. She might actually die. Uh, Mikasa is with her, right? Yeah. They walked out together, but I don't think she's on top of the wall. I think, yeah, I think she'll probably die and Mikasa will have to watch or something and that'll be what finally makes her absolutely turn on Eren. Um, I think that'd be a little poetic bullshit. There's also the dude with the glasses that I forget his name. Uh, he'll probably overthrow Flock or something. He was, like, good-hearted and was getting pressured into doing all these bad things by the Jaegerists, so maybe he'll have some a minor role in uh, beating back the rumbling plan. I don't know, I can't think of any other side characters. Yelena, Anya Kapon, uh, he'll probably live or something. Uh, yeah, I see him and Armin shaking hands in the final chapter and him going back to Mali or some bullshit. Um, am I missing anyone? The chef the chef will live. Uh, Sasha's family will probably live. Uh, Niall's dead, rest in peace. He's a titan, so is Pixis. Those were sort of our leftover uh, military compadres. Uh, they seem to be dead. I don't know. We should have gotten a better goodbye to them. Hopefully we do when Connie has to cut him down or some shit. And he'll be like, uh, we love you, Niall. We love you, Pixis. But uh, you're mindless now. we got to take you out. Um, 
That'll be sad times. Unless, like, they capture them and Hanji somehow gets them at the end and it's like she's got Titan friends forever or some shit or she's going to work on a cure to transform them back and that'll probably, and that'll sort of be Hanji's, like, happy ending in the final chapter. She's working on fucking transforming Pixis and Nile back into humans and that's her happily ever after. So let's get into Hanji and Levi now because they're off somewhere. Theories about uh, they jumped in the plane. People think maybe Hanji got shot too. Uh, Levi's missing some limbs. I think we've all confirmed that, even though Isam hasn't showed it since then. Uh, it looks like he's missing a thumb or something. It is possible that uh, Ackermans have some bullshit plot armor, regenerative bullshit, and Levi comes back and fucks shit up. But I think, and I've said this before, that Levi ends up with the uh, Jamie Lannister character arc, where he has to find um, some sort of life uh, outside of being a warrior. The book Jamie Lannister plot in the fucking in the fucking Game of Thrones show, Jamie Lannister gets his hand chopped off, which is supposed to stop him from being a warrior, and he's supposed to find a better way of living. He just puts a metal arm on and starts fighting again. Uh, when the whole character arc is supposed to be about him overcoming violence, so I think. It's going to be uh, Levi's happily ever after that he's like in a wheelchair or something. And he's got to find some uh, other passion in life to go after. Now that his goal is done, peace has been achieved, and um, he doesn't have to kill Titans anymore. And I don't know. Um, they sort of teased maybe that Hanji and Levi would get together in the end. They're like the last two surviving old school. They are the only last two surviving old school scouts because everyone else died in Shinganshina. Oh, but nine of them died. Did you know? Um, so, yeah, I think Levi lives. And I'm, I've am i got on here Hanji lives slash die. So I'm not entirely sure. I do like that, that goofy ending I just thought of of her trying to figure out a way to revert all the mindless titans back into humans or something. That would be a neat little ending. I don't know. Hanji is currently the leader of the scouts. Uh, it has been set up for both Jean and... Um, and to possibly succeed her eventually, they both been teased as. Oh. They have both been teased as leaders. Um, and obviously because he's smart, uh, John ever since Marco has been like we've been told John is a good leader. John is a good leader, um, which sort of paid off in the the Shinganshi arc. But I think we'll probably get some more of that. Uh, maybe in the disarray of the rumbling, John like takes charge, turns Mikas on a bit, uh, gets in there. Who knows? Um. So Levi, I'll say lives, and I'll say Hanji lives as well, but both of them sort of at a risk of dying, though I really don't see Levi dying. I think he f he functionally died in the narrative already, and we'll sort of just get a, well, he's got to find an alternative way of life. I'm trying to think of what that is. Like, does he get married or something and have a kid? I go, Petra's dead. That's long gone. I guess Hanji's around. Uh, fucking throat is fucked up um they ha there has been teasers of his story and levi at certain points i don't think that's gonna happen though so i don't know i don't know how levi and hanji's stories conclude i've sort of given archetypes for them but they're certainly the most interesting i've seen people uh put ideas that maybe they'll come back in kiyomi's plane or whatever i don't know about all this um i was just thinking maybe like that weird metal or whatever has something to do with regenerative bullshit. That weird Titan glass that they make the, the 3D maneuver gear out of or whatever. Because um, that hasn't been paid off entirely. There has to be some sort of twist relating to that. Um, that'll have to come back into play later. And maybe it's like making Levi god mode for one final time before this series ends. Even though we sort of got that with Zeke in the forest. Um... So we have Historia, Gabby, and Falco here, and I think they all live. I think Gabby and Falco hold hands on a boat back to Mali. That's probably how that ends. Um, I don't think we're going to get fucking, like, a, a flash forward. Otherwise, they'd probably have, like, a family or some shit. But I, I seriously... I don't know. I have it in my head now that the final fucking thing is going to be Armin on a pier saying goodbye to, like, all his new Mali friends and Mikasa and John who are going back there. He'll be standing with Annie, staring at the ocean, and he'll think back on everything Aaron did uh, and sort of reflect on the story in, like, a final monologue before we go away. Um, so I don't think we're getting any flash forwards unless it's, like, six months or something, and 14-year-olds aren't going to have fucking families in six months. Literally impossible. Um, but Historia, I think, overcomes it. 
We'll have to see what's the go with the child. I still hold that it's Aaron, even though I denied it for a long time. Um, we'll see how that factors in ev into everything. Um, there probably won't be a, a royalty, I don't think, by the end of the show, and she'll just get to go raise her daughter or son on a farm. Um, I really don't know what happens with this story. I think she has to become pretty relevant in the climax again. And I've made the idea of her helping Gabby. I think Gabby is obviously the main protagonist that's left in the series. Uh, she'll save us all. Falco will help her out. I don't know. Maybe there is a risk of Falco dying. Um, I don't know. We probably wouldn't have gone through all the trouble of making Falco the jaw titan if he was just going to die. So I'm pretty safe in my Falco will live uh, belief, I think. Um, so left, we have... Um, three characters that could swing either way. Um, certain ones I think will go a certain way, and certain ones I think will go another way. Oh, this fucking yawning nonsense, you know what I mean? So we have Connie here, the 104th himself. I have him live slash dies. Um, I could see him going either way, really. I don't know what Connie's happy ending would be. What would he even do? I don't know. Uh, do they still have his mother? Maybe Hanji works on that shit I was talking about before. I think she's got to be dead by this point. I don't know. Maybe he's like the last shot we ever get of Connie is him in a fucking dark cellar with his mother's fucking Titan standing there and him fucking looking at it longingly. I don't know. Maybe Connie gets sort of like a nihilistic ending where he's like sort of unsatisfied that Sasha's dead and all that, and that his mother, and nothing happened, because he's been very pissy recently, like, that's sort of Connie's character after the, the, um, after the time skip after Sasha died, is him being very fucking angry, so I don't know, maybe Connie does die, um, sort of go either way with it, our boy Connie, it doesn't really matter in the grander scheme of things, I don't think, so Connie lives or dies, I could see both, now McGarth and Piek, I lean more to McGarth dying, and more to Peck living, Piek. Um, I think Piek uh, brokers a deal somehow uh, with Paradise. I think Magath does well. They sort of come to a ceasefire with Arm and Amicus and be like, we got to take out these fucking giant titans uh, right now because if they get off the island, all well, the world's fucked. Um, <coughs> fucking distractions. Um, I can see McGarth dying in some heroic way and them sort of honouring him as Helos afterwards because uh, McGarth is supposed to become Helos, uh, which is cool. McGarth is a great bloke, you know. He likes the Eldians, even though he's like a Marleyan prick. Uh, dislikes all the racist Marleyans, wants them to go to war in a fucking draft or whatever. Uh, he's a good bloke. I can see him sacrificing himself for Piek or maybe Reiner or maybe uh, Gabby. And I can also see him surviving and brokering a peace. Um, the same goes with Piek, but I lean more to Piek living. I think one of the Marleyan shifters has to survive. <laughs> and Paul goes dead. Reiner, by, the, by my fucking estimation, will be dead. Uh, Zeke will be dead, so we need our girl Piek to survive. Um, and she hasn't really done anything wrong. Uh, to justify her getting killed. Unless she and Magath, like, sacrifice. Like, what if everyone sort of, like, sacrifices for themselves for Gabby and so Gabby can land the fucking shot on Aaron or some shit? Um, I could see that happening. Um, so I could see both of them dying in this scenario, but, um, I don't know. I feel like Magath dies and Piek lives at this point. Uh, are we forgetting anybody? I think that's it. I think I've gotten everybody. I certainly can't think of anyone that I'm left, yeah, that I'm yet to judge. I really think I got everybody. Uh, so fucking, I think that's it. So Twitch stream, remember, if you're this far, if you listen to all this shit, uh, imagine like two hours or so of chapter discussion, you can come along, tell me all your opinions, put the fucking in the comments, say what what you think is different to what I said, what you disagree with, what your ending will be, what you the theorized about. Who's in the final panel, even though I didn't go into that because I don't really care. Um, tell me all that bullshit. Uh, tell me... Do a, do a little list like I've done. Put all the characters and say lives or dies. 
maybe even give like a short little explanation or some shit like that, and then come to the fucking Twitch stream, and let's argue about it, uh, be in chat, there won't be too many people, I, I gander, so be one of them, you can get your opinion heard, we can fucking bounce off each other, we can see what the fuck is going on, um, to see that though, the best way is to go to the beginning of the video, where I put the fucking times on the screen, maybe they're there again, maybe I couldn't be fucked, uh, also, go on Twitter, because I'll remind you about it. The Twitter is in the description, the Twitch is in the descri- uh, description. Uh, at Nation of Enter is the Twitch, uh, if you just want to Google it. And Kyle Entertainment, with an underscore, is the Twitch stream. But again, that link should be in the description. Patreon's there. If you want, uh, liking, commenting, subscribing, all those good shit, trying to get the subscribers back. I want to hear your thoughts in the comments. Liking is the simplest shit ever. Uh, and that's what I think, I think everything we've gone over, that's how I think Attack on Titan will end, ultimately Gabby and Historia put an end to that Aaron prick, a bunch of people die, a bunch of people survive, uh, we're going to one, chapter 130, we get a happy ending, bittersweet happy ending, Reiner and Aaron sort of die, yikes, big cries in the chat, um, and that's it, I think we're done here, support links in the description below, thanks.